What's going on guys? My name is Noonan and today I bring you a fun little deck build video. This is going to be my Kaiju Nuke deck. Now a lot of you guys have asked a little bit more gameplay, some deck builds and other stuff like that. Now this isn't a deck I would recommend playing, I mean you can play it in high ranked play, um, but it isn't one that's going to really be taking you, you know, all the way up the leaderboards. It's just a fun little deck that I like to troll around with and play every once in a while. And it's a fun deck to roll. So let's go over the cards that I'm rocking in the deck here today. And we'll kind of throw it into some action and kind of show you how to play it. So if you guys have these cards and you want to roll this deck, it has a fair amount of success. But overall, it's just a very, very fun and trolly deck to kind of rock with. So starting off to be the Kaiju Nuke deck, obviously you got to be rolling Kaiju. Um, if you're not familiar with Kaiju, you can go ahead and watch my overview guide on him. Basically, he's kind of like a mortar. We won't say too much. We don't want to spend too much time on the cards. We're going to go with Warden. That AoE damage, low cost, high AoE damage, uh, very good. We're coming with Meteor, which is your mobile AoE damage. Mortar, backline AoE damage. Warden to utilize a frontline shield to keep your unit safe. And the warp just in case we need it. So as you can see here, I have very, very heavy AoE damage kind of built on this deck. And the whole point of it is basically, like I said, the Kaiju nuke deck. Because every unit that comes in, you're going to be nuking them down with tons and tons of AoE damage. So cards are pretty simple. Um, doesn't really take too much to unlock all of these. If you're a little bit higher star power, you might not um, have the Warden yet. But I mean, you can kind of substitute out that for any other kind of mid-range cost tanky card. But let's go ahead and rock it inside of a battle. I'll kind of show you guys how it works and just how fun overall this deck is. Now, I was playing with this kind of off-stream, testing it, seeing how it works, and like I said, I've had an okay amount of success with it. It's definitely not the best deck build in the world, but it's just a ton of fun to kind of mess around with and just troll other players. I would say it's a decent counter to, I would say, the Sap Warper combo. If uh, somebody comes with a bunch of Sappers, you have a ton of AoE, or if somebody has a spam deck and other stuff like that, this is a really good counter to those types of decks. Like I said, once somebody starts rushing in with tons of small units, you nuke them all down and it makes it so easy to rack up that free energy pretty much. So we're just waiting for a game to load on in. It's gonna go ahead and pair us up against somebody. Somebody here, it's getting pretty tough up on the, you know, 4,000 star power. Not a lot of you guys are here yet, but you know what? I've been uh, I've been keeping up with the forums and everything and you guys, you guys are catching up quick. I gotta say, I'm impressed with a lot of you guys and how fast you're climbing up the leaderboards with um, all that star power. There we go. We'll go ahead and we're loading on in now. And uh, let, let's see what kind of damage we can do with this deck. Win or loss, we'll, we'll see what happens. But like I said, overall, it's a very, very fun deck to play around with. So, this is not a bad map. Not a bad map, indeed. We're going against an Ash. Okay. Um, not too worried about that. Ash, not really of a tanky card. Uh, has no armor. Okay health. So, let's go ahead and get right into things here. So, let's go ahead and put a Mortar here. We're going to put our Kaiju up here. And basically, now we have a very strong front line. So anything he approaches with in this short distance, we can nuke it down pretty much all within these four squares right here. Or even if he comes in very close, we could still nuke it down. Next turn, we'll call in a Sapper and then throw some Meteors out basically every single turn to kind of troll him a little bit. We're going to play uh, be, be a little cheesy with our cards. So he's coming with the Ash. Okay. Coming with the Jets. Like I said, he's, he's rushing in. He's coming in hot with a lot of units. He kind of has to because we're playing the back lines. So he has no choice but to come in. So now we can go ahead and basically we can AoE both of these guys down. We can do the same with our Kaiju. So let's go ahead and... Hmm. Yeah, let's go ahead and throw Kaiju damage there. So now look at that. We have the heavy AoE damage coming on. Jet's almost dead. We could come in with the Sapper, but let's throw... Let's throw a Sapper on standby here. Let's use the Meteor to get even more damage down on the Ash, and his Jet's already gone. So that's three damage right off the bat. Easy peasy, easy peasy first strike, and now it's gonna make him very hard for him to start approaching us because his ash is nearly dead, and any small units to mid-range units he's coming in is it's pretty much gonna be dead. Okay, so he's coming in with the jet. I see how it is. Moving up the boomer a little bit. But um with the jet loss, it's really not that too much of a big deal because look at now we had that sapper on the standby. And what we could do is basically we could do double sapper. Now the jet's pretty much dead. We can come in with Kaiju, get the damage in on Ash. And then, hmm, next we should do we should do a warden up here because uh, if Ash comes in, he can lay some damage on to the tower or the Senso Gate. But now we're gonna have that warden to kind of block the path thing for any other units to kind of want to start coming in hot. So we have another 161 damage strike coming in. We're still sitting pretty good, pretty good right now. Our Kaiju still has full health, but like I said, coming that back lines with heavy AoE damage is so trolly. It makes it so hard for people with um, 
spamming small units like this person is right now. So coming with the mortar, coming with another boomer. That boomer sitting in the back, his ash is running away. He knows his ash is in trouble at this point, but this is why we have the meteor for small units that are kind of running away and making a recall point because now look at that. That meteor, that mobile AOE damage is basically picking off units that are going to start running away, which is uh, it's really, really fun. It's really funny and it makes it tough for the opponent to kind of recall and run away with any kind of units like that. So let's go ahead and throw some damage on to the mortar he has coming up. And then even with the warden, what we can do is I'm not going to attack because if we attack, basically we lose a shield. No, uh, it was the mortar. We wouldn't have lost a shield actually, but we're going to move it up a little bit. We're basically creating um, a bigger gap from him to my sensor gate, so it makes it tough for him to start approaching now. So, another 161 damage, like I said, any units he's kind of start coming in at this point is gonna be very, very hard, because we're just nuking everything down with tons and tons of AoE, so basically, instead of getting one kill per turn, we're getting multiple kills per turn. So he's coming with the longbow, he's moving the mortar, I suspect he might hit us with a boomer, let's see. No, he's moving up with the boomer, but the boomer's now low health, and that's what's really fun about this AoE deck, is just how all low health units are really going to suffer pretty much at anywhere that you put them on the field because if they run away and we can't reach them we have that mortar they come into us and they want to start picking off units it's going to be tough because we have tons and tons of aoe so now we're going to throw that we're going to keep the warden there like i said warden acts as a very very good strong shield with uh, that two armor so we're going to keep him there we're not even going to have him attack because we want to keep that we want to keep that gap as large as possible from our backline big aoe units so like I said, if you don't have this tanky unit, there's other tanky units you can use to kind of substitute it, it substitute it. but um, we're not making use, a lot of use out of him. He's just being a wall for us. So let's go ahead and sit back, and uh, as you can see, I'm not moving the kaiju. You don't want kaiju to come in. You want all the small units to start basically moving into you, so that way you can nuke them all down. So he has some boomers coming in. He's, um, what are we going to do with that longbow? Okay, so he's making a little bit of an approach with the longbow, but he knows if he comes in with a lot of small units as he is, it's pretty much going to be done for him. It's going to be very, very tough. So let's go ahead and utilize our mortar to get that AoE damage like so over there. Then we can call in that meteor. Like I said, that huge mobile AoE damage to get another strike off. And then we can make a little bit of approach with the sapper. And even next turn, we could do a sapper warp combo to get AoE damage based on whatever he puts down or even damage right on the senso gate. So we're sitting in the back lines. We're getting those small strikes off. And really, he can't do anything. We're just picking him off turn after turn. Slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. So let's see what he does. Coming in with another boomer. He really can't make an approach. Okay, so coming in with the jet. Very interesting. Moving up with the boomer a little bit. Okay, so going for the bottom tower. That's not a bad play by him. He really has no other options at this point other than to get energy from the towers down below. Which is not a bad idea. Ooh. Enemy double turn? What's going on here? Turbo! What are you doing to me? Tur Turbo Turbo knew how just ridiculous this deck is, so they decided to give this person an extra turn just because we're just so broken. But you know what? That's fine. That's fine. We don't we, we don't need an extra turn to get ahead. He can have all the advantage that he wants. He can get that 563 damage off on me because you know what? We're still sitting in the back lines with that kaiju and the mortar, and we're gonna come in hot and nuke all of these units down. These units don't even know what's coming to them. Honestly. Fine, works for me because all of these guys are dead. They're gonna get obliterated. So now we can go ahead, come on in, and basically we're gonna hit the boomer. Bo now our warden did lose a little bit of shield, but we have a meteor right here. We're gonna get that final damage in. So you know what? Though there was a little bit of a bug, though he got two turns, he came in hot, grouped up all those units, and we made some amazing use of the Kaiju AoE, the Mortar AoE, and then that Meteor to finish them all off for that 1337 damage. So, that is the victory. Like I said, um, it makes it very, very hard for enemies to approach, even though he got the little bit. It was a little bit of a, a mess up there. There was a little bit of a bug, and uh, they got the double turn. He came in hot with multiple units, and we just nuked them all down when it was our turn. And that's pretty much it. That's the victory. Easy peasy, right? So like I said, in no way is this, a, I would say, a deck that you play competitively high up in the leaderboards so that's going to give you a lot of success. It might give you some success, but it's very easily counterable as well. But overall, it's just a fun little deck to kind of mess around with and to troll with. So if you guys want to rock this, I'll kind of go over the cards one more time. So you got the Kaiju, you got the Sapper, you got the Mortar, 
Meteor, Warp, and then you got the Warden. If you don't have the Warden, you can kind of swap it out for another tanky card. Other cards that I'd recommend if you're at a lower bracket and you want to play around and mess around with this kind of deck, you can roll something like, I would say, you can go a Light Tank. Light Tank is a little bit of a higher cost card, but um, I would say swap it out maybe for a Heavy, Heavy Gunner. Um, they have decent amount of health with one armor, so it's a little bit of a tanky unit if you're not rocking the Warden. But overall, that's pretty much the Kaiju Nuke deck. I just wanted to make a fun little video for you guys today. And uh, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more. But as always, guys, have fun while you're playing Super Senso.